Good morning. We will pay attention to debtors' reconciliation today. Before we start with the exercise, we will just recap again. If we have the debtors' journal or any of your other journals, it means that you will have uh, sales to now, so for instance, 100 rand, sales to stain, 400 rand, and we will add up and work out what is the total. Then we will transfer the individual entries to the accounts of the debtors. So we will open an account for now, debit his account with 100 rand in the debtors ledger, open an account for Stain, and debit his account with 400 rand in the debtors ledger. At the end of the month, we will transfer the total in my debtors journal to my debtors control on the debit side. We will do the same entries for the debtors allowances journal, cash receipts journal, cash payments journal. So the individual entries on the date that the transaction took place will be transferred to the individual account of the debtor in the debtors ledger. At the end of the month, the totals of the debtors control column in the various journals will be posted to the debtors control account. The debtors control account is therefore a summary of all the entries in your debtors ledger. Therefore, the debtors control account should have the same balance as the balance in the debtors ledger. Now if we add the totals in the debtors ledger we see that the total amount in the individual accounts indicate that 500 rand is outstanding. In my debtors control I see that the amount is 600 rand. That indicates to me immediately that there are a mistake and I must go and look for the mistakes and correct the mistakes. So first of all, I will ensure to see if I've posted all the entries to the debtors ledger, if I transferred all the totals to the debtors control. If that is not the mistake, then I'll have to go back to the journals, add up to see where did we make an adding mistake. And if I go back to the debtors journal, I see that I made an adding mistake of 600 rand. So if there's an adding mistake, it means the mistake is only in the control account and it will only be corrected in the control account. If there's a mistake in the individual account of a debtor, so you uh, uh, posted the wrong amount or you put it in the wrong person's account or you put it on the wrong side of the account, it will only be corrected in the debtor's ledger. Any mistake in the journals will be corrected in the control account and in the debtor's ledger because if I make a mistake inside the journal, my total will also be incorrect. That means I will take the wrong amount to the person's account and I will take the wrong amount to the debtor's control account. So before you start with the debtor's reconciliation, it is very important to decide must this specific error be corrected in the debtor's control account? Will it be corrected in the debtor's ledger? Or must it be corrected in both of them? If we look at the information provided, they say that the debtor's control account has a balance of 6585. The debtor's list have a balance of 7398. That is automatically an indication that there is a mistake because the two are not the same. We will start the debtors control account with a balance that we calculated and we will start the debtors list with the total that was already recorded and then we will correct all the entries. In the debtors control account we will therefore show that the balance on the debit side after we've done all our entries during the month was 6585 and the total of my debtors list is 7398. The debtors control account in the cash receipts journal was undercast by 500. Undercast means that it was added up by too little. If the debtors control total is incorrect, it means that we made 
a mistake in the debtor's control account because we posted this incorrect amount to the debtor's control account. If we record something in the cash receipts journal, bank is debited and debtor's control is credited. Therefore, if we put 2500 too little on the credit side, we will have to correct this mistake by entering 500 rand on the credit side. The debtor's control account will be credited with 500 and the bank account will be debited. There was no individual entry mistake in the journal, so there is no mistake in the debtor's ledger. The debtor's journal was undercast by a hundred rand. So we added up too little in the debtor's journal. No mistake in the individual account, so no mistake in the debtor's list. When we record an entry in the debtor's journal, it's when we sold goods on credit. Therefore, we will debit the debtor's control account. It was undercast by 100, so we have to add another 100 rand on the debit side of the debtor's control account. And we will show that the sales account was too little on the credit side, so we will credit the sales account with 100 and debit debtor's control with 100. The transfer of the credit balance of 250 in the account of S. Purple in the creditor's ledger to his account in the debtor's ledger were not recorded in the control accounts. So it was recorded in the individual accounts but not in the control accounts. For Purple, we have an account in the debtor's ledger and we have an account for him in the creditor's ledger. That means that we buy goods from him and then he is a creditor to the business. At the same time, our business will sell goods to him and then he's a debtor. They say it's a credit balance, so the balance can be on the credit side of the debtors or the creditors. And the balance is on the credit side of the creditors ledger. So it means we have a balance on the credit side of 250. If we want to transfer it, we have to take it out on the opposite side. So we will debit the creditors control and we will credit the debtors control. There's no mistake in the debtors ledger. So this entry will only be recorded in the control account. The debtor's control account will be credited with 250 and the creditor's control account will be debited with 250. A check for 720 received from S. Summer of was correctly recorded in the cash receipts journal. So there's no mistake in the cash receipts journal, therefore there's no mistake in the control account but no entry were completed in the debtor's ledger. Therefore, we have to record this entry in the debtor's ledger. The amount on the check is 720. That's after the discount was allowed. So it means we have to reduce the account with the 720 and the discount. This 720 equals 90% of the amount of the debt because we already allow 10% discount. So if we want to know what is the full amount, we will multiply with 100, the one that we want, divide by 90%, the one that we know, and we will reduce his account with 800 rand. The outstanding debt of W Winter of 300 was written off in the debtor's ledger but no entry was completed in the general ledger. So in the debtor's ledger, there's no mistake because we've already done this entry in the debtor's ledger. We still have to complete it in the general ledger. It's an amount that must be written off, so it means that the debtor's control will be credited to reduce the debt with 300 rand. Debtor's control credited and we will show that the bad debts account will be debited to increase the expense.
The balance of 158 on the account of a debtor was incorrectly recorded in the list as 185. So it means there is a mistake in the list and it will only be corrected in the list. The balance was recorded as 185 on the debit side. The balance should be 158. So it means that we put too much on the debit side and we will correct it on the credit side. We will determine the difference between 185 and 158 and indicate that this debtor owes 27 rand less. An invoice was issued to Alpink for 8 blouses at 120 rand each. So if we multiply 8 with 120, it will give us 960 rand. An entry was completed in the journal as 800 rand. So we made a mistake in the journal. Therefore, we took the wrong figure to the account of L pink in the debtor's ledger. And the total of the column is also incorrect. So we will have to correct this entry in both the control account and in the debtor's ledger. The difference between the 960, if I multiply 8 with 120, and the 800 will have to be corrected. We showed the amount as 800, so we have to increase it with 160 rand. In the debtor's control, we will increase the total debt on the debit side with 160 and credit the sales account with 160. The account of L Pink will also be debited with 160 to increase his account because we only recorded 800 instead of 960. A dishonored check of 560 Received from Jay Groen was recorded in the creditor's control column in the cash payments journal. A dis dishonored check should be recorded in the debtor's control column in the cash payments journal because we have to increase the amount in the debtor's control. If a check was dishonored, the debtor owes the money to the business again. The entry was correctly recorded in the debtor's ledger, so there's, there's no mistake in the individual account. This mistake will only be recorded in the control account. Because we recorded this entry in the creditor's control column, it was posted to the creditor's control account. We will now indicate that the debtor's control must be debited to increase the amount that debtors owe, and we will credit the creditor's control account to correct the mistake in the creditor's control. A credit note issued to W. White for 184 rand was correctly recorded in the debtor's allowances journal, so there is no mistake in the journal, therefore the control account will be correct. But it was posted to his personal account as 148. When we issue a credit note, we credit his account. So we were supposed to credit his account with 184, but we only credited it with 148, so we must credit his account with the difference between the two amounts. Because we put too little on the credit side, we will credit his account with 36 to decrease his account with the difference between 184 and 148. An invoice issued for 172 P. Blom was treated as a credit note in the subsidiary journal. The entry was correctly recorded in the debtor's ledger. So there is no mistake in the debtor's ledger, so there will be no correction in the debtor's list. An invoice was treated as a credit note. So it means that we will have to correct the invoice and we have to correct the credit note. When we treated it as a credit note, we credited the account of the debtor. That means to correct that mistake on the credit side, we will debit the debtor's control account and cancel the amount in the debtor's allowances account. The original entry to correct the mistake will be on the debit side 
and we will credit sales to increase the income. So when you put an amount on the wrong side of the account, you will correct it double on the other side when you do the correction because you first have to correct the mistake and then do the correct entry. The credit balance of 410 on the account of Y Yellow was paid by him after his account was written off. The amount was included in the debtor's control column in the cash receipts journal. So credit balance was paid after his account was written off. So he hasn't got an account in the business anymore. When we write off his account as bad debts, we close his account. Now there's a credit balance in his account. So it means that we made a mistake debiting the bank, crediting his account. Actually, he was supposed to credit bad debts recovered. The amount was included in the debtor's control column in the cash receipts journal. So it means the column total was also incorrect. So we will have to correct this mistake in both places. The debtor's control account will be debited with the 410 to show that the debtors owe this amount again. And we will credit bad debts recovered because this was not supposed to be on the credit side included in this bank figure because it was supposed to go to bad debts recovered. Yellow now have a credit balance because we made a mistake. So to correct that credit balance, we will debit his account to indicate that we don't owe him any money. A receipt for 450 issued to Lemon was correctly recorded in the subsidiary journal. The 450 was received after 10% discount was allowed. No entry was recorded for the discount allowed. So it means for the money received, we recorded it in the journal, posted the correct total to the control account, posted the payment to Lemon's account. We have to go and do a recording now for the discount in both places. In Lemon's account, we will show that his account must be reduced with 50 Rand. The 450 that we received was equal to 90% of the debt. So if we want to know what was the 10% discount, we will multiply by 10 and divide by 90. And we will also record this 50 Rand in the control account. Credit the debtor's control account with 50 and debit discount allowed to increase the expenses with 50 Rand. No entry was recorded for the account of 800 of G Black that was charged with 5% interest per year for three months. No entry was recorded, so it means that we have to correct this mistake in both places. We will debit Black's account with the interest calculated on the outstanding amount of 800, 5% for three months, and that will increase his account with 10 Rand. We will also record the 10 Rand on the debit side of the debtor's control, and credit interest income. After we completed all these entries, we will balance our debtors control account to determine what is the new balance after all the corrections and omissions were completed. Add up the debit side of the debtors list, add up the credit side of the debtors list, subtract the two figures from each other and determine what is the outstanding amount according to the debtors list? This amount must be equal to the amount in the debtors control. If they are equal, it means that you corrected all the mistakes and omissions. If they are not equal, you must go and look for more mistakes.